the party slowly approaches the forest of Eldorath. As you look around, you can smell the death in the air from the previous parties that have explored this area. You wonder, and you wonder, how best to proceed through. To your left, there is a pathway that goes deeper into the forest, while to the right, you can sense a bit more lightheartedness, but something more mysterious and magical lies in this direction. Whether that's good or bad is yet to be seen. What will you do? And Dungeons and Dragons should be a one player experience, dude. I am Razio. What's up, you beautiful bastards? Happy New Year. It's been a while. As you can see, everything's changed again. So we're back. And uh, anyway, point of this video. A member of my Discord uh, shared a Reddit thread in the MMORPG Reddit, so we already know this is going to be good. Uh, it's, I mean, it's fucking Reddit. Uh, talking about the social aspects of MMOs and how they seem to be missing from most modern games. Now, if you haven't seen it already, I went uh, into detail about this issue. And I've known about this for a long time in uh, this video right up there. If you're interested, you can watch that. And I've said it in other videos as well, going back five years. But... Here is the original post. Let's read it together, and then we can address some of the comments made afterwards, like, you know, we're Brett fucking Cooper, though I, I promise Raz's comment section is going to be dripping with my unfiltered opinions, which may offend some, but I couldn't give less, less of a shit about that, so let's just move forward. So, it reads as follows. I miss the so social aspect of video games. I've been playing a lot of multiplayer games recently after going on hiatus to explore single-player games, and I've noticed that the social aspect of MMORPG specifically has changed. With the implementation of party systems and discords, players no longer really need to speak to other players in-game when they have their communities outside of it. I'm not sure if this is a good thing or not, but it is the way things are now, and I understand that. It makes me miss the early to late 2000s in games like RuneScape, where you would have people just go to a house party to hang out with a group of people. I remember in some games, I would even have to physically go to a location in-game to hang out with a friend after school because there wasn't a free voice program available to people back then. I believe there was only TeamSpeak 3 behind a paywall. Like I said, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I just think it makes it kind of hard for people to make friends nowadays. Edit, people keep using Final Fantasy XIV as an example of that finding people who are social is easy. Final Fantasy XIV is an anomaly in that regard, and unfortunately, I find the game to be incredibly stale and boring. So if you've got another MMORPG suggestion, let me know, as long as it's not that. Now, while I agree with the sentiment behind his post, so, you know, social aspects missing from MMORPGs, I need to correct some errors in how he came to his conclusions. First of all, I don't think that things like Discord or other external communication services are to blame for the downfall of the social aspect in MMOs. There's, There was no paywall to services like TeamSpeak, Ventrilo, etc. As he claims there was at the time, they and other services like them were free back then, and back in the day, the majority of communication happened in-game with text chat that was built into the game, like, you know, trade chat, barons chat, what have you. It wouldn't be until later the event, like, uh, you know, like when you joined a guild, for example, or a raid team, that you would then get a link to a Vitrello or TeamSpeak server, and even then you'd only use it when you were doing those activities. So these, in my opinion, didn't do much to erase the social aspect that is paramount to have in these sorts of games. It might have contributed a little bit, but nowhere is it responsible at all. In a lot of ways, I think it helped the games. Now, 
when he said Final Fantasy XIV being anomaly, I also don't agree with that because every MMO has an area like that where, you know, shenanigans and RP take place, such as Limsa Lamensa, you know, people's mansions in fourteen. Um, I've seen plenty of that kind of shit in Fantasy Star Online, Elder Scrolls Online, and yes, even WoW, like Goldshire and whatnot. Final Fantasy XIV being incredibly stale and boring, however, I do agree with. Yeah, come at me, Church of Yoshi P. But again... I don't think external services or hubs of that sort uh, within the games are to blame for anything. In fact, it's quite simple what is to blame for all of this shit. LFG Q systems. And it's Blizzard's fault too, because before the LFG Q system, there was no other MMORPG that had such a system. After it was released in Wrath of the Lich King, every fucking MMORPG to be released after it had some sort of queue system to do everything pve pvp world quests raids you name it it became viewed by developers as a must-have staple requirement of the genre and on top of that that the ability to pay to name change faction change story slash level skip server transfer etc thus removing all semblance of server reputation and it was the perfect cocktail to destroy social interactions in a genre where it was the most essential and differentiating thing that made them function and unique in the first place. I mean, just look back at all the other MMORPGs before 2008-ish and you'll see at their core design was all around making social connections and social interactions. Mobs requiring CC, elite quests and dungeons that require a party to do. The fact that many games like EverQuest and Final Fantasy XI, you had to have a camp, you know, with your party and you pull mobs into the party to kill them one or two at a time to level up instead of quest hubs and stuff like that. All of these and more were designed around needing other adventurers in order to get stronger and progress in the game. So simply put, the social aspect was sacrificed for convenience. And that wasn't a good trade, in my opinion. I mean, if, if you're an ancient fucking fossil like myself, too old as fuck. When you think back on the best memories you have of the MMOs you've played in the past, the vast majority of the ones I'd wager come that come to your mind will be because of the people you played with, not because of the game itself or an item or a boss you killed. For example, if I think back in Assurance Call, you know, me and my friend chain drained some player through a through a tent wall and kill them and he eventually sent us a bunch of death threats IRL because he said he was going to find us and beat the living piss out of us uh also uh, in dark age of Camelot I remember PKing this guy who was really close to getting the uh I can't remember what it was called the the trophy or the emblem in the in the tower and he told me he hoped I'd choke and die on my own fucking birthday cake and then in uh World of Warcraft I mean all the different PvP and go doing uh I remember so many quests, elite quests, where we group up with people to try to take down elite mobs back in vanilla WoW. I mean, social interactions are what made this genre niche, and when the genre was young, that was everything. The internet was young. Connections online were somewhat new. There are also other aspects that have contributed to this uh, as the genre has aged. Um, this guy had a fairly good take in the thread uh, as well, so let's take a gander at this guy's response. So this guy's response is fairly good. There are a few reasons why modern online games have little to no social aspect. Every MMO is designed around constant power increase. This can be via levels, the amount of stuff the player has, gear level, and other stuff. They also put a lot of cool stuff at the end of this power ramp. If you're not powerful enough, there's parts of the game you can't play. This encourages players to only perform activities that will help them increase their power level. Being social does not increase your power level, and if it did, players would min-max being social. I agree with that. Players play the game for the game, not for the social experience. I disagree with that. In the times before, in long, long ago, MMOs offered things unique to the genre. A large, persistent world, easy to understand RPG mechanics, watching numbers go up, and a graphical chat room. For the younger players, it's hard to imagine, but in the 90s and early 2000s, there wasn't a lot of options for being social in real time with multiple people online. There was IRC and online games. We also had instant messengers, but they were for one-on-one -on -one communication. Integrated and easy to use services like Discord were many, many years away. MMOs are no longer new. In the 90s and early 2000s, each new MMO brought in players that had never played an MMO before. We didn't know how MMOs should be played, so rushing to end game wasn't on our minds yet. We didn't have sites 
detailing every drop, every monster, every quest, if it had quests, an hour after the game came out. We just did whatever we felt like because we didn't consider our power level at all. I don't know if a social MMO like in the past could be made like that today. Rec Room and VR Chat are popular social spaces with the social aspect being ahead of anything else. I mean, this was a half decent take. It is true that a lot of has changed over the years, especially in the genre. Who we are as gamers has evolved or devolved, depending on how you look at it. And the internet is a completely different world than it was in the late 90s or early 2000s. As for not a lot of social options online, I don't entirely agree. I mean, I mean, I was getting groomed by pedos online in MIRC chat in the late 90s, but it wasn't everyone. It wasn't just me. That's really fucked up. Anyway, I digress. A lot of responses came into this poster's thread, and it being Reddit, a few others were okay as well, but a lot of them were so fucking bad that I could feel my IQ dropping by the sentence. One comment in particular, which is the comment that was posted in my Discord server and then got my gears turning and spawned this video in the first place, was dripping with so much saturated retardation that it warrants digging into here. So let's read, shall we? Strap in, boys and girls, this one's a fucking doozy. So he says, players no longer really need to speak to other players. This guy says, that's a good thing though. Many people don't enjoy being forced to talk to random strangers for many valid reasons and forcing them to do this through in-game mechanics just so they can finally enjoy reaching some specific in-game area. Completing specific storyline quests or getting some virtual item is unquestionably wrong. What the fuck? What the fuck? You will alienate a lot of people by doing this, by either making them not even consider playing your game or stop playing shortly after trying it. And this is bad even for people who don't mind forced interactions because less overall people playing the game equals less income for developers, equals less content they can produce for everyone. This guy clearly knows that caps lock is cruise control for awesome, but I digress. To the note, it makes it kind of hard for people to make friends nowadays. He says, What makes it hard? I can log into Final Fantasy XIV, visit Balmung, go to Ulda, and literally find hundreds of people hanging out there 24-7 willing to socialize and make friends with other players. It takes almost no effort to do that, other than installing and downloading the base game. I don't even have to download any third-party add-ons or third-party chat programs like Discord. There are also plenty of RP events going on in this game every day on multiple servers, including the ones where you would have people just go to a house party to hang out with people, a group of people. Again, without requiring people to rely on any third-party add-ons or chat programs. P.S. This subreddit never ceases to amuse with all its posts of simple-minded idiots who falsely exaggerate things. Oh my god. Uh, okay. Holy fucking shit. Now, I wonder what would happen to this guy if he found out that the ultimate experience and game he has been looking for has existed in video games since video games began. There are hundreds of thousands. No, 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 no. Millions, probably, of them. You guys ready for this? They're called single-player fucking games. <laughs> Let's go over what each letter in the MMORPG stands for. Massive, okay. Multiplayer, well, there it is. We can stop there. No need to go on on any of the other letters. These games are designed to need other people in order to get the full experience. This smooth brain literally said it's unquestionably wrong to require players to interact with other players in an online multiplayer game. You in full retard, man. Guys, I, I can't. I can't. Why do I fucking do this to myself? This person just screams Gen Z who probably has ADHD and some other crippling social anxiety thing that they self-diagnose from watching TikTok videos. If you don't like social interactions and want the option to do everything in the game solo, then you're playing the wrong genre, man. Social interactions are the staple in this genre. This person's argument is the equivalent of me playing a game like, I don't know, Destiny, and then complaining that I like the story and, and, and I like the gameplay, but I shouldn't be forced to be in first-person shooter perspective, and I should be able to solo the whole game in a top-down ARPG aspect. Literally, 
The dipshit is literally arguing that he shouldn't have to adhere to playing this game in its specified genre. What? Luckily, though, not everyone in this thread is as brain dead and responded the way I would respond if I was an active Reddit poster. Like, uh, like this guy right here, where he says, uh, I wish you just move on to other genres instead of continuously ruining this one. And this is what MMOs are about, though. Oh, God, I can't do it, man. I'm right there with you, Slinky Rock. Good fucking job, man. You have brain cells. Holy shit. Like, whoever, whoever this guy or girl is, I just have to say the following. I'm going to be calm about it, too. Your window licking is not 100% your fault. I imagine your parents shoved an iPad or a smartphone in your hands instead of actually paying any attention to you. You probably never had any friends to go outside and, you know, ride bikes or skateboards with or whatever. And I'm truly sorry for that. In my opinion, you should spend less time on reddit being pissed and writing up bullshit l takes like this on the mmo subreddit and spend a little more time being pissed that your parents were raised such a fucking pussy you're literally complaining about a game belonging in the genre it does and that it shouldn't have features for its genre because it's unquestionably wrong go fuck yourself anyway guys Apologies for the voice a little bit. I have been sick, but I had to make this video, man. I hope everyone's having a, a, a good beginning to the new year as we all live in a dystopian hillscape. And uh, keep in mind, I have a book that's coming out in a couple weeks. So yeah, keep an eye out for that. It'll be posted up all over. It's a self-help book written in pure asshole. If you're interested, great. If not, that's awesome. If you like my content, give it a thumbs up, guys. Share it around. It really helps me in YouTube's god-awful algorithm where I'm sure I'm shadow banned by now. But as always, my friends, Keep it real.